I'm bring up the browser and you can see when held this way it has a 20 key hybrid QWERTY layout like the shore type one, the Blackberry Pearl. Flip it over the options for a QWERTY keyboard. We'll pull up the mobile burn site. Vibration feedback whenever you press a key which is pretty good to have. Makes it a lot easier. The wide layout of the screen does work pretty well for the QWERTY too. Um, I'm not a real fan of widescreen formats in general but it does work for QWERTY keyboards. You can see we have the website up now. Finger scrolling. It's uh, kind of spring loaded and it's a little aggressive. Moves a little bit further than you would intend. So you notice that you know if I grab on the word support here and scroll down, I'm no longer on support. So it scrolls more than you move. Um, that might make it a little bit more difficult to keep track of. Try pulling up the full site. If I can grab it, it's a little difficult. Of course, you can see it works in landscape and portrait modes. Automatically switch. But the browser is none too quick. And it seems to have its share of problems. Whereas the second attempt it worked. So definitely not real impressive. You can also see that it works pretty well on the um, full size page though. Surprisingly good. Let's see if there's any automatic zooming. It doesn't appear to be with anything based on tapping. It moves quite quickly around and really is a very realistic rendering of this site. See what it looks like in portrait mode. Uh, it looks like it's reloading the page. Bit of a bummer there. There we go. Again, without some sort of intelligent zooming, though, it's a little difficult. That front has a very different kind of menu layout. I find it a little overly complicated. Go to half zoom. Again it appears to be reloading the page. And there we go at this zoom level. It's a little, a little bit easier to get a feel for the full layout of the page, although it's difficult to read the text. have to give the browser props though for how accurately it's rendering. Test out the camera quickly. Hold down the shutter button, activate the camera. You can see my finger was in the way. It's kind of up in the corner. It's a little bit bad position if you ask me. Hold down the shutter button just for a little bit and it'll focus. Press it all the way. It takes the photo. Fairly straightforward user interface. Pretty easy to change settings. See the various resolutions. We're at the full 3 megapixel version, but you can shoot at lower resolutions. dedicated hardware back button on this phone or an OK button in case of Windows Mobile Professional would have been nice but we don't have that. You can also see it, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but like many camera phones there's a magenta cast in the center area, different color on the corners. Take another photo. 
not too slow. Does a reasonable job. Take a look at the photos and pull up the programs menu and pictures and video here. See, there doesn't appear to be any kind of swipe gestures, which is a shame. At least none that work very well. So in the end, while it's not a bad looking device and has a decent spec sheet, the uh, LG Insight just turns out to be way too difficult to use and way too slow. Between the small on-screen items you have to hit, and you're expected to hit without a stylus, you have to use your finger, and just the um, you know, lack of speed in general, how long it takes for you know, screen rotations and just about anything else, that's not really a device we can recommend. Um, perhaps future firmware, firmware releases will fix some of these problems, but um, at this point the LG Insight is just kind of a novelty for us. If you are interested in picking one up, it's available for $199.99 from AT&T right now.